Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing? I'm sure you are enjoying your weekend and making your health and wellness priority. Welcome to Health Focus Nigeria, your one-stop health and wellness enlightenment program. Health Focus, a 30-minute program, comes up live every Saturday morning on Citizen FM 93.7 Abuja at 11.30. You can join us every Saturday morning at 11.30 on the program via the link in the comment section. I am Catherine Adwola Abimbola, your regular anchor and producer of the program. Health Focus, as I said, is your health and wellness program and it's our priority to make sure that we guide you with enlightenment and information that will make your health and wellness top notch. Last week, you recall, we discussed sickle cell anemia with our guest, Dr. Patrick Eze, Director of Clinicals and General Practitioner at a private hospital in Abuja. And he gave us information about sickle cell. And this week, he came to give us elaborate information about sickle cell. But let me remind you that you can continue to engage us on all our social media platforms. Twitter is at HealthFocusNGR. WhatsApp is 0704028277. Email is healthfocusnigeria@gmail.com, And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is also Health Focus Nigeria, via the link in the comment section. That link takes you directly to our YouTube channel and you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Facebook is also Health Focus Nigeria. Let me take our social media handles again. Twitter is at Health Focus NGR. WhatsApp is 0704028277. Email is healthfocusnigeria at gmail.com. YouTube channel is Health Focus Nigeria. And Facebook is also Health Focus Nigeria. Once again, welcome. I am Catherine Adonola Bimbola. Let me remind you of what sickle cell anemia is. Sickle cell anemia is, a, is red blood cells twist into a sickle shape and die early. It is a group of disorders that cause red blood cells to become awkwardly shaped and break down. It leaves a shortage of elder red blood cells and can block flow of blood, causing pain, which is the sickle cell crisis. Fatigue and pain are symptoms of sickle cell. The management of sickle cell anemia includes medication, blood transfusions, and rarely bone marrow transplant. Now, let us listen to more explanation from Dr. Patrick Eze, the general practitioner and director of clinicals of a, of a private hospital where he explained more on sickle cell. Some people say that SS people, some of them don't get to 30 years, some of them don't get to 40 years. How true is this? But they're not very far from the truth because the typical hospitalization for most patients with sickle cell crisis is sometimes more than 10 to 15 times every year. And if you can imagine someone coming to hospital 10 to 15 times every year, and most times any small malaria the person is down with pains. Any dehydration, the person is down with pain. So because of the increased hospitalization, imagine if there was no hospital that look at it. So I will tell you something that a lot of people don't know. In the past, what was rumored to be Obanji was actually sickle cell disease. You know, Obanji was that trend where the child comes into the family, dies, then they will make another child, then the child dies, and the children look like each other. The thing with sickle cell too is that People who have the trait always sometimes look alike. They have the frontal boss and mm -hmm. spenic look. Those are thinner than um, they have with other children. So because of that, the prehistorically our forefathers mm -hmm. saw that trend. It's still the same even at that point. But they were able to also know, which is what this group of people are saying now, that the life expectancy is always short because of the frequent crisis. A lot of organs can be involved, can affect the brain, or stroke, affect the heart, cause heart attack. It causes a lot of injuries to a lot of organs. So usually, where the health facilities are available, patients can be managed. Or they can live their normal lives productively and um, have not have as much problems. That means it is possible yeah. they live beyond that. Force. Why not? A lot of people are living beyond because of medical advancement proper care, proper management. Federal Ministry has a national guideline now for management of sickle cell patients that involves a lot of, they don't have, we don't wait for them to fall sick 
before they come for clinic appointments. They are followed up the way hypertensives are followed up, the way diabetics are followed up now to ensure that death expectancy is achieved or even to pursue. These days, there's a lot of advancement in medical practice that enables you to do a meal synthesis and then test to see uh, what the uh, genotype of the child can be like. It's a very expensive process and modality. It's not something that is done routinely. But a lot of parents who have this issue are going as far as that to know if they can then uh, know the genotype of their children in vitro. Okay, if you now know the genotype of that child in vitro and the child is SS, is there anything that can be done? Well, you can't change the genotype of the child. It is it's genetically determined by genes. By both parents, some people are doing bone marrow transplants. The bone marrow transplants give the child a chance. The bone marrow will not be producing the S uh, genes as against the SS uh, uh, molecules as that you have with sickle cells. So we have such advancements, but of course they're very expensive. Okay. Is it treatable? Is it curable? It's very treatable because it's a genetic problem. It's already established. And most of the time, the problem is a lot of people don't know that they have sickle cell. Sometimes you could have individuals that have sickle cell that don't start from childhood to express it. Really? Yes, they're very rare. Can you explain that? When an individual has SS, within the SS, there's a spectrum of arrangement of the genes that make certain classes of the SS experience more hospitalization. And then there's a spectrum of it that is not as bad as, you know, or even within this. So usually we do that kind of mapping. When in the clinics we come, we do the mapping and then put you on the on, the, on a certain particular scale. So within the SS group, there are individuals that we can see from their genetic arrangements that they will be more prone to having crisis. And then those ones need more checkups, they will need more uh, transfrontal ultrasound scan, they will need more diligence, they will be on medication, testing agents, and all that. But so for the treatment, once they is established that they have sickle cell and they come down with the crisis, most hospitals are able to manage. What they need at that point is hydration. So you hydrate them very well. Make sure they get adequate fluid. The more the volume of the blood, the less the crisis. So even in our admission, we give a lot of IV fluids. Then we transfuse when the level is very low. We don't transfuse all the time because most of the time, it's really for sick class. They have what we call a steady state. So they have a blood level that they're used to already. So once the blood level is within that level, even though it's lower than what you expect to be, we don't give blood. But there's a level it drops then we know this person blood will most likely help. Or if the person is having, for instance, chest pain, the crisis, I'm worried that the heart is affected in blood, to see if the blood volume can be increased to help the individual uh, pass that phase of the crisis. Um, that's for treatment. Then for, for management, as I mm. said, it's now being on, managed under a spectrum of uh, chronic illnesses. We don't wait these days for people to have um, Serious crisis. Yeah, so usually these days what we have um, is we have clinics, sickle cell clinics. In sickle cell clinics, we have hematologists, um, uh, expert pediatric hematologists who now um, are there to see that individuals who have this problem don't wait until they break down before they seek care. So they are being um, changed on a weekly, monthly basis. Every three months, they have specific routine tests that they do. And we have seen a very large improvement in the care of patients who are within this program that are managed. So and this helps them live longer. What are the things that people should look out for if by eventually you want to help a sickle cell patient that fall into crisis? So usually with the um, sickle cell crisis, we see it more in, in children. And what we have observed is that they will complain of pain, fever. So a lot of them, depending on the age of the child, you see a lot of them start from crying a lot. Inconsolable cry. In fact, that's usually the, the trigger point. So when they, they come with inconsolable cry, or sometimes swollen digits, so the fingers swollen. When they come like that, then they're investigated. I will explain how it is. Usually within the first two years, children, may or may not have crisis. The incidence of crisis in children of less than two years is very low. Very, very low. The reason is 
that the guy told you that the red cells should be circle. But when, when a baby is born, you know the, the baby has been under water for a long time. The baby survived in water, in amniotic fluid mm-hmm. for nine months. So within that period, to breathe under water, God gives the baby a specific type of red cell, fetal hemoglobin. So that fetal hemoglobin it makes the baby to survive very low oxygen tension. And that hemoglobin persists for about two years. So usually, you may not be able to know in one or two years if the baby is a sickler or not, except you do the specialized test. But the commonly available test will be able to know. So usually, in also to say wait until after two years. So within the first two years, even if people come down with symptoms of the crisis very mild, we won't see the very serious one. From two years and above, that's when we have the problem to start because that's particular God giving him uh, hemoglobin disappear. Then you now see this clear sickly hemoglobin. And once that one is now uh, the operating uh, hemoglobin of that child, the tendency that the crisis starts is very high. So once from two years old, we now start seeing any evidence of frequent crying. So as the child gets older, the sickling actually improves or stops or reduces to a very large extent. That's why some people will even tell you if you survive up to 30 and you're sick, like the tendency that you leave to 70 is very high. Uh, it's a good um, assessment because as you get older, the crisis reduces. Partly because of two reasons. One, the person is older, recognizes symptoms better, and is able to take care of himself better, bring himself to the hospital. He starts noticing he's not feeling okay. He takes more water to hydrate himself. He takes malaria prevention ahead of time. He's now more careful about his or her health. So the, the crisis is a little less in adulthood. And then by the time the child is a full adult, it's usually, you know, the body has adjusted very well. You don't see it in adults as such. So they don't really have the classic uh, symptomology of other illnesses. The, what you just notice is that this person is always going to hospital. Where is the person is in the hospital? It's always in the hospital. That's one of the things you used to know. Um, as for things that you might see on a one-on-one listing, the, the symptoms will just start like malaria. You know, when you have malaria, you have pain, 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 that kind of but an extreme version. So that's what you see usually. It will never really come for an emergency and the person collapse. Except okay. if the person has a stroke or a heart mm. attack. Now, there are some things they used to say that, ah, simple cell patients, that they have a yellowish eyes yes. and they look sickly, yeah. this and that. Is it true? Yes, a lot of simple cell patients have that kind of presentation because their body is always breaking down red cells. One of the byproducts of red cell breakdown is a compound we call bilirubin that is yellowish. And that yellowish tinge always marks the eyes, so they have a lot of bilirubin is high in their blood. So, yes, you have them having the Things that people can see and say, okay, yeah, this guy has yellow eyes, you know. So it's one of the things that you notice. But once they are being followed up, they have the treatment is continuous. They're usually fine. They grew out of that look. So with sickle cell anemia, I would advise that people take it very seriously. It's not something to be joke with. If you're going to get married, no your genotype. Because the truth is that a lot of parents are not prepared for the torture from sweet a child that is sickler. It's not a joke. It's one of the most agonizing and uh, marriage threatening problems that you can have. You can imagine the country's already had enough. You're trying to provide for yourselves, provide for uh, you know the family and then you now have to spend so much on hospitalization of the child. And not just the hospitalization, the trauma of every night you are awake trying to console this child, not knowing the child will make it, start organizing. Yeah. Rest in the child now dies. Now dies. So sometimes you even see parents who even lose a sickle cell child and they are not sad about it. So with sickle cell anemia, I would advise that people take it very seriously. It's not mm. People take it very seriously. It is not something to joke about. I mean, what else can we say? Dr. Patrick Eze has given medical information and medical counsel as it is. You will agree with me that this information is elaborate and we should follow it. For people that are yet to get married, please, we should not be carried away by love. Love is not enough. I mean, of what value will it be when you marry each other and you are agonized with child or children that are sick? 
I mean, it's, it doesn't worth it. I mean, we should just take care. And for some who had been, who had given birth, married, have children, and they are in this position, I all we can say to you is that um, the strength of God will be with you. I mean, that is just the best we can say. And God will make things work for for you. We should also know that we should not mock anybody with any medical condition. I sing this song every time. Nobody will want to be medically disadvantaged. We should help them if we can with vital information that is professional and you know, encourage them to seek medical care at qualified medical facility. And if you know you don't have any hand to do any of that, Please leave them as they are and don't compound their problem. We want to encourage you to please share this broadcast and engage us on all our social media platforms. Twitter is at healthfocusngr, email healthfocusnigeria at gmail.com, WhatsApp 0704028-2777. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. The link is in the comment section. It is Health Focus Nigeria. Our Facebook page is also at Focus Nigeria. Please do the, the much you can to make sure that your health is very important and it is taken very good care of. This is just one life each and every one of us has. And it is just only 24 hours that is allocated to everybody in the world a day. And you can make sure that your health is priority. Until next week, that will come your way with another medical topic remember to engage us on all our social media platforms twitter at health focus ngr whatsapp 0704028277 facebook health focus nigeria subscribe to our youtube channel health focus nigeria and email is healthfocusnigeria at gmail.com. My name is Catherine Adwola Abimbola, your regular anchor and producer of the program. I'm saying please do take care of yourself. Share this broadcast. Bye for now. Thank you.